What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. I'm Carl Fisher and today we are going to work on Christina's Cadillac. It has not been worked on for a little while. We're in the new shop. It's kind of the first real cleanup that's happened. Everything's kind of put away. We got a few more things to go. We'll kind of give you a shop tour on a future video once we're fully settled in. I got a little hangout spot I want to work on and a little bit more wiring to do. But for today, I'm going to bring Christina's caddy on the hoist. It's going to live here for the next little bit as we pick away on that body drop. I know I just got to get back on this car so that we make sure that we uh, make some real progress. So trunk drop downs today. We're going to do some bead rolling, some metal forming, that kind of thing, and just keep going. All right, let's get into it. All right, so this is the spot I was talking about. These are the trunk drop downs. They go from the trunk and they drop down to the rear lower quarter here. So these are super rusty, obviously. I just hacked them with not, not even a straight cut when I did the uh, body drop because I knew I was replacing those. So these are what I'm gonna make today. First off, I'm going to clean all this up, cut it all off. Actually, both sides are a little bit different. I noticed there's a body line here that actually makes it step down and around. And on this side, it's totally smooth. But uh, those are the differences side to side. So we're gonna clean all this old stuff off. We're gonna make some patterns and then we're gonna fabricate these panels. So let's get messy. All right, so we got this all opened up here. I kind of cleaned this lip off. It looks like it's in pretty good shape still. That's kind of a good thing. I was worried when I peeled that off that there'd be a little bit more rust in there, but there's not. So we will be drilling through this and welding from the top side inside the trunk down onto the flange that is our trunk drop down. This side of the car, passenger side of the car, this bottom lip of the quarter here is really nice shape. There's nothing for rust in it other than a, a little bit of surface, but there's no through holes. So I'm gonna gingerly drill all these spot welds out and peel this last flange off of here so that we can actually fully finish that. The reason I told you about that, because this side is pretty rusty. Like this is all gotta be replaced. I'm not even gonna bother taking this lip off because it's all gonna get cut off later anyway. So when we're working like this, my thought is kind of work from the inside out, especially for rust repair. So everything welds to this trunk drop down. So that's why we're gonna do that first. And then, you know, in a future video, we'll take care of this bottom rusty section. This flange overlaps this inside trunk drop down. So we do the trunk drop down first, and then this piece, which also has the cut in it, this will actually be made afterwards and welded on top of the trunk drop down. That's the way the flanges are. So you kind of got to take note of that when you're working on cars is what came first. Is it this piece or that piece? You always replace the inside stuff first. So uh, I'm going to clean this off, get these spot welds drilled, and then we'll be clean enough that we can get a nice pattern and start figuring out how we're going to make this piece. Okay, so I just, I redid this template just a little bit cleaner because I cut a little bit too much off of the bottom here once I notched these and the template moved up. So I'm gonna try and hold this in place right about where it's gonna be. 
You'll notice the floor is a little bit wonky. My panel is flat and the floor is a little bit, you know, wonky. So we'll true up the floor to the panel, basically is what I'm trying to say. Okay, if you haven't seen me do it before, this is the dirty finger template. It's where I'm just gonna rub right on the edge of the sheet metal where I'm gonna cut this. Give us a pretty accurate line where that is. Now this bottom flange is gonna come this way, three quarters of an inch to be here. And this one's gonna go this way, three quarters of an inch. What I am gonna do, since this flange is on a slight angle, I'm gonna trim about an eighth, eighth of an inch back from our actual line to give us a little bit of room to have a tipped edge. I also hammer and dollied this so that it was nice and smooth. I mean, from the factory, they're all wonky because it's been spot welded, but the time is now to, to try and make that nice and straight. I'm just gonna mark about an eighth of an inch back as my cut line. Now that we have our template, I'd like to make our uh, hammer form. So these bars we used a couple videos ago, the X-Brace inner structure video where we were hammer forming flanges. So this is just half inch steel flat bar. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark this pattern out onto the flat bar. And by clamping this together, with this pattern, we're basically giving the sheet metal no option but to go where we want it to go. So I'm gonna clamp it and have that shape built into our hammer form so that when I'm hammering it, it's forced to stay flat because the bars are clamped together, but our hammer hits are forcing it to go into that stepped flange shape. And you'll see, no cutting, no welding. We'll be able to get that whole stepped flange in there as if it was made from the factory with you know, a 200 ton press. But this hammer form will do what we want it to for this panel. So I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna mark this out on here. It is a shame to have to cut all the way. So what I might do, and also to kind of back up for a second, this, once again, this extra notch is only on one side. So I'm gonna build this hammer form to make the driver's side first that doesn't have the notch in it. We'll hammer form that flange and then we'll cut this form out for the notch and then we'll hammer form the flange for the passenger side. Because I don't want to have to cut a half inch piece of flat bar, you know, two feet long, what I might do is start the form at this level, maybe come a little closer so that you can see what I'm talking about. Instead of cutting this whole line all the way down, just to get this little step built into this, I'm going to pretend that that is our line so that I don't have to cut it. And I'm gonna add a piece of metal here. It would be really handy if I had quarter inch by half inch flat bar and I could just weld a little chunk on there. I don't, so uh, I'm just gonna use some quarter inch flat bar. I think it's two inch wide. I'm gonna cut a strip and just add it. It's just gonna be a strip that's got an angle on it like this. I'm just gonna cut that piece and add it to the outside of that. And then we'll be able to clamp it, hammer form our one side, and then I will cut this piece out. We'll hammer form the other side. Okay, you got your ears? Got your glasses? This is basically what I'm doing, just adding that step into our bar. This little step right here. I cut my piece way longer than I needed to. I don't know how I did that. Probably read the tape measure, or read this upside down. Sixes were nines. I bet that's exactly what I did. Yep, I'm an idiot. Okay, so I'm just gonna tack that on there. I'm actually gonna do it where it's supposed to be. Just a little zap. It's 
So you don't need a lot of tacks on here right now. It's not really super structural, so just a few tacks, a few hot tacks on there. All right, that's our first part of the hammer form. We've got that dialed in there. So it's gotta be nice on both sides because we're doing a left and a right. We're gonna be hammer forming over the top of it this way and we're gonna be hammer forming it over top this way. Ground both sides nice and smooth. Something I always like to do is uh, do both panels at the same time. Like if you're gonna make two panels, you might as well prep two panels and uh, make two panels at the same time rather than just do one to completion and then the other one. I don't know, I feel like it saves a little bit of time somewhere. Now, this is our clamping bar. And our clamping bar, although we probably could get away with clamping it with just a flat straight bar here, it's going to help to make a little notch on our clamping bar to really hold the steel in the area where it's going to get kind of shaped, I guess, shrunk and stretched. When you bend a flange over a corner like this and you force it to, to step, there is shrinking and stretching happening there to make that shape happen. So the tighter and the closer that you can clamp your bars to the edge, you know, the, the less amount of movement that is allowed to happen is very key for hammer forming. So I'm gonna also do the exact same thing we just did. I'm gonna make a piece on here that just clamps it a little further. So I'm actually just gonna use this piece. Nah, I'll cut a new one. I'll cut a new one. This time I'll read, read this properly though, so I don't have to cut too much. Okay, six, six, not nine. Just a quick tip, one of the things that um, a lot of guys use is a scribe. I like to use scribes too, depending on what we're using it for. But uh, to be accurate with a Sharpie, a Sharpie gets dull and uh, it's got, you know, like maybe a hundred thou wide marker. Pick what side of the Sharpie that you're going on. I always like to leave the Sharpie on the piece and then run my blade beside it so I can directly see, you know, this side is Sharpie and that edge of the Sharpie is the actual line. Helps me be a little bit more accurate. And I'm leaving the Sharpie line on, cutting on the other side. That is the beginning of our hammer form. Now I'm gonna make a couple of pieces of sheet metal. I'm gonna make sure that I add my three quarter inch lip on the top and bottom. Take note of which way they're gonna bend for left and right. So I'm gonna go grab a sheet of 18 gauge steel. I'm just gonna shear a little strip that's three quarters of an inch so that I can use it on this curved area to just kind of make my dots all the way along so I know that I've got a three quarter inch flange traced out evenly on everything. Probably do that with whatever leftovers there are from shearing this. All right, we're just gonna trim these up. The Makita power shears. These are amazing on sheet metal. If, uh, if you get a chance to get one of these, they're not cheap. I was lucky enough, I found mine at a pawn shop. It looked like it had never been used. And uh, these things are, they're awesome. They just peel the sheet metal right off. The trick with these two is you don't take your whole cut right away. You wanna cut close and then it makes it really easy to kind of steer it if there's only about a quarter inch to a half an inch of metal on. Barely even leaves a burr. So we are ready to hammer form our driver's side inside. So I'm looking at the panel this way and I want to tip it inwards, right? Right. Right. 
Okay, so something that I find a little bit easier to do when I'm lining things up. I'm just gonna give this a little tack, like, like a nothing tack, just to hold it in place for the duration. Just a little something. And away we go. So far, I'm just knocking the flats down as much as I can. And then I'm gonna get in with um, a chisel and a couple of tools to try and just add some definition to that little spot there so that we can get it right into the corner for that step. Something else I have to be careful with is that it's not a perfect 90 degrees on this panel. It actually comes up on an angle and uh, it's a little less than 90 degrees. So we'll just have to creep up on that as we go. Let's try and do it as evenly as possible. Okay, and I grab that chisel. You don't want it to be a sharp chisel or else you'll end up cutting the metal. And uh, you don't want to use a body hammer with a chisel. We'll use the uh, little ball peen here and we're gonna Knock it right on the inside corner there. Oops. I think we did pretty good. We can clean up and add a little bit more sharpness to that if we'd like to. If it was a full 90 degrees, you could hammer it directly against what we had there, but it did do the step just as, just as I'd hoped. Now, we're gonna pop it out of here. I'm gonna grind away our little tacks. All right, well, there it is. There's our step that we've got in there. Now we can tune it up with the dolly a little bit. This is right where my clamp was, so I, I wasn't very smooth and I ended up stretching that a little. We can fix that, no problem. But this little step is what we wanted. So, find a dolly. Tune this up a little. What else we can do is we can add a little bit of a hammer crease right into there. I'd like to clamp this first just so we can hold our situation there. We can do the same thing here. We can add it to an edge. Just tune it up a little bit. There we go. Our step is looking pretty good now. Now the next part of this panel is this curved line has to get tipped. There's another trick to that. What I'm gonna to use to do this tip is the bead roller. When you tip a curved flange, you do have to do a little bit of shrinking and stretching depending on which way the curve is going, which way the flange is. So this is a tipping wheel. It's basically just a dull point. And uh, this is a, a soft, I believe it's like a urethane rubber die on the bottom. Some guys use skateboard wheels too. It's nice if it's soft on the bottom. This is the same thing I use for doing like diamond patterns. So the idea when you're tipping is not to allow the pressure of this to push down to do the whole bend. I wanna actually add pressure up as it's going through and then just roll it through, you know, a few times. So I'm just trying to do even pressure up nice and slowly. It's not really the biggest deal because you're going to run it through a few times here. And basically, it's going to warp the panel a little bit just because we're adding these curves into it. And we'll have to just shrink or stretch 
to make the panel flat again. You can see there's a wave happening in this already. It's because there's too much material here. So once we actually fold it over, it'll probably put a bit of a banana into our panel where we'll have to add a little bit of shrink or a little bit of stretch along that flange to get it back. So we'll add a little bit more pressure. Okay, so this is what I was talking about with the edge because it's got a curve on it. If you think about a straight line or a curved line that goes to two points, the curved line is technically a longer line. So there's more material here. When I folded this over, there was more material. So I don't know if you can see, if you look down it, how it kind of humps. That flatness, we want this panel to sit flat. So like I said, it's got too much material here. So we're gonna have to shrink this a little bit to let it relax. And we'll have to shrink a little bit extra right here because it's got a little bit sharper of a curve. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So we'll go to the shrinker. Just do a few shrinks and then we'll go check it. It's easy to go do too much here. So I'm just gonna lightly do a pretty good one right there. And because our curves go this way and they need a shrink, when the curve comes back around, it needs a little bit of a stretch. So there could be a little stretch needed. Just give it a, just a, little, just a little bit. See, it's a, a lot better, but there is still a bit more right here that needs to come out of it. So we'll do a couple more shrinks right there and we'll see where we get. Let's have a look. Looks nice and flat. Now I'm just going to give it a bit of a tune up on the edge of this dolly. Yeah, I'd say we're still doing relatively good. We might need a little bit more right there. Our panel's nice and flat. Other than a little bit, there's still a little bit right there. I'm just gonna give it one more, one more quick shrink. Okay, there's gonna be a little bit of fitting to get that in. Let's go have a look at it. Like I said, this is the side that is going to get a whole new bottom lip, so I'm not worried about this bottom edge right now. We do have to trim a little bit of that out. Well, there you go. <laughs> it's a lot of work for a little step, but if you want to do it without cutting and welding like the factory does it, you can do it with hammer forming. Once we remove that junk, that should be able to clamp all nice and tight. I do still have to do some rust repair and... Uh... <laughs> Woo. I broke its fall with my arm, so it's okay. This one's gonna be a little trickier. All right, now that we got our notch cut in, we can do the same thing as the other side with a few more hammer hits to try and get this shape in there. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna lock it in with uh, just a little MIG tack. Okay, hey, once again, I'm just gonna go nice and slow, nice and easy. Keep in mind these lines are not actually true. You saw the waviness of that, uh, that flimsy floor. It is actually supposed to be straight, which the actual dies that we've made are totally straight. So 
you'll see this line coming down and that's not to worry about. So we've got a little bit of waviness happening here. That's okay. We're gonna have to get that out with the hammer and dolly afterwards. But this is coming along quite nicely. I think we're good. I'm just gonna cut my little tacks off. Now we'll just tune up these flanges a little bit. You can see we've got our step in there and we've got our extra collected metal that needs to be shrunk back in. Well, the flange itself isn't the prettiest thing in the world, but we did get our steps right in there. Check that out. That's gonna notch right around just like the factory did. Now we still have to tip our inside flange here, but that notches right around that, notches right around that. It's doing exactly what we want it to. So I'm gonna go ahead and tip this edge. All right guys, well, I'm gonna leave the video off right here and, uh, and thank you all for watching this hammer forming video. Curved flanges as well with a little bit of shrinking, a little bit of stretching, but mostly I was really stoked on how we could get these steps into that flange. Um, they're pretty heavy steps and we didn't have to do any cutting, didn't have to do any welding. It worked out really good. So thanks for watching, make it custom. Everybody, I appreciate all the love, the likes. It's pretty cool that we're growing and this is a, you know, a, a larger part of our life now. It's opening some doors for us and uh, we just appreciate every single one of you uh, for sticking with us. Also, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to Speedline Filmworks. They've got a YouTube channel. They are a uh, video production company. They did Metal Reborn. It's been an amazing journey with these guys doing these videos and they've got one last one supporting documentary that they put up on Speedline Filmworks YouTube channel as well as metalreborn.com. It's called The Battle and it's live right now. They, they kind of timed it with this video so go check it out and don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications for Speedline Filmworks. Those guys deserve it, every single one. But The Battle, it's it's probably the best one yet. I, I think it's, uh, it's a real insight into the struggle of building custom cars, you know, and my truck especially. I'm, I'm not flawless. They're like, things broke on there. I learned things from, uh, from failure and I, and I ain't perfect. So go check out the battle and you'll see what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot, everybody. I appreciate you guys. We'll see you on the next one.